as we take you north of the border where the Braves and Jays are kicking off a three-game series. And it's going to be Spencer Strider getting the start for Atlanta on the heels of news that Kyle Wright and Max Freed will be out for at least two months. So, Ariel, I'm coming to you first. Atlanta currently holds a six-and-a-half game lead in the division. So is that window for the rest of the teams in the NL East about to close? The window's always open in the National League East. Last year was the best indicator of that when the Braves themselves were 10 and a half games back with nine days left in the season, caught the New York Mets. The Phillies were 21 and 29 last year in June. They made the World Series. It's always an open window in the NL East, LG. Oh, without a doubt. And when you see uh, sharks in the water, would put you yep. say, per se, when those guys go down and you talk about two talented pitchers at the top of the rotation, not guys on the back end. These are guys that they're counting on to handle a lot of the workload. And we, we saw in New York is that when those two big guys go down, it trickles down to the bullpen, right? Mm -hmm. Trickles down to the hitters because now they're pressing more to try and score more runs. So it could be the beginning of, of a, a major shift in the National League East, but the other teams have to start playing a lot better to catch them. Yeah, I think this is going to be interesting. X, when I come to you on this, it's going to be two rookies that have struggled in the bigs filling in in their place. And then, of course, Michael Soroka is in single A, but he's been out for the last two seasons with injury, and he's not looking great at the single A level. So what does this mean for the Braves and who has to step up in their absence? Yeah, I won't say that the window is all the way open, but I will say it is slightly cracked, and I think it's cracked for the Phillies. I mean, this is a team that was in the World Series last year, and you think about last year, at, 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 and they had a 19% chance back on May 31st to get to the postseason. Right now, May 12th, they have a 48% chance to get to the postseason, but I think they're setting their height, heights a little higher. This is a team that can win the division if they get the starting pitching back going, and that's what we've seen over the past Last three days, the starters have been good. I look at, you saw Taiwan Walker do his thing. You just recently saw Nola do his thing. And the same thing for Wheeler. They will get Ranger Suarez back on Saturday as well. And that was the biggest issue was the starting pitching. They had a 5.08 ERA in 34 games. So you look at, okay, can we get some type of consistency coming from the guys that are supposed to lead us to the postseason and hopefully give us a chance to win the division? They get that now. Bryce Harper is back that is a huge plus in this lineup Trey Turner hasn't even got going yet either has Swarber if the window is open it's open for the Phillies they might be coming the New York Mets are another team you you can't count them out their bats are going to heat up at some point in the season the pitching is coming back you finally have Max Scherzer not suspended Justin Verlander made two starts if the Mets can get their pitching going and their bats can really start to heat up, stop averaging just over three runs a game, then maybe the Mets at some point will get hot in the season. We see the ebbs and flows of baseball all the time. Teams get hot, teams get cold. It's time for the Mets to finally come through. And I know now that you feel the same way. No, oh, definitely. And when you look at their lineup as well, it, it's only been two or three guys that have been carrying the load. Well, Francisco Alvarez is finally looking like he's getting a little bit more acclimated to handling everyday duties of the, the starting major league catcher, right? He was sharing time with Nito. Now it's his job right now. And his, his at-bats are getting better and better. He's starting to be a little bit more productive. It's not a finished product as of yet, but that's a huge plus, especially getting used to catching guys like Verlander and mm -hmm, Scherzer mm -hmm. and how they like to work. So, you're looking for him to be able to learn on the fly, but at the same time be productive. It's a lot of pressure on him, but I think that the Mets have enough in that lineup. It's the Martes, it's the Cannas that really have to start stepping those it up because and the sluggers too. they're just yeah. shadows of what they were last year. So if those guys can kind of bounce back to be more like they were last year, then the Mets are going to have a chance to sneak in as well. Okay, something we had discussed. Oh, go ahead, X. No, I was just going to say, for me, the, the Mets are the team that it has been the most disappointing as far as mm -hmm. what they did in the offseason and being able to commit so much money to this roster. And you haven't had guys healthy at all. You haven't had guys go past the fifth inning. This is a team that barely gets guys going to the fifth inning from a starting standpoint. Uh, they can't get going in the first inning. They give up most runs in the first inning as well. And then now they're counting on some young guys to do some things that they may not have been expected to do when I think about Brett Beatty, when I think about Alvarez as well, you might see Vientos here coming pretty soon because the DH role has not done anything as well. And then when we look at Mark Canna and, and Marte, yes, those guys can get going at some point, but this is still a team that counts on like three or four string and base hits together. They need power in this lineup and they don't have that. 
Yeah, let's take a look at the competition for the Braves in this division. Obviously, you just talked, Ariel, about the Mets and what they need to do to turn it around. Here's the upcoming schedule, the next five series. Blue Jays, no slouch, right? We know where they rank in the AL East, but of course, the AL East is arguably the best <laughs> division in sports right now. Rangers, Mariners, Dodgers, Phillies. Not an easy slate there, Nelly. Yeah, without a doubt, you're looking at the, the fact that that window, you said cracked X, I think that window's a little bit wider with each one of those series. And when they start to lose series, then you start to wonder, you know, can they stay afloat for those two months with those major pitchers gone? Yeah, and uh, again, you were talking about it being wide open or cracked open for the Phillies. You saw the Phillies have that upcoming series against the Colorado Rockies. Rockies girl, I have to point out, they have won eight of their <laughs> last 10 games. But you look at the strength of schedule, it could be wide open. It's wide open, and this division is going to be tight. The fact that the Nationals are not even, like, the Nationals are, what, four and a half, five games? Or I'm, I'm definitely wrong on the number of the standings. But they're within, they're within that yeah. same reach yeah. of those other teams. They're the last place team. So even though we talk about the AL East all the time and how close it is, the National League East is still just as close. Yes, the Braves look far and far ahead of everybody else, but now they're down two pitchers. Two starters, right, Freed? Anybody's game here in the NL East. It's yeah. so early. And the Marlins Again. are smelling the blood in the water, too. I mean, the Marlins calling up their top prospect from a sure. pitching standpoint. Yeah, we didn't He's going to be up now to rude. help contribute to this team. <laughs> so, I mean, we we can't overlook the Marlins and, and how close they are right now. Now, I don't know if they finish it toward the top of the division, but where they are right now still gives them an opportunity to close window as well. Yeah, it should be fun to see how this all unfolds and all beginning tonight north of the border against those Toronto Blue Jays.